photos of one Rich Hogan in the booth and Sheldon Mennery. All right, Rich Hogan, Sheldon Mennery in the booth. Rich uh, was is either eating some of his French fries or having a root canal. I can't really tell what. No, he's actually eating some of Rashad's French fries. What? Corey McDuffie. Corey McDuffie, Patrick Chapin, going to game three. I tell you, I went to my dentist to have root canal work done. The first nine attempts, the thing broke. It was the ten drills of agony. Rich Hagon stepping up out of the booth so that I cannot strike him for his pun. Quickly replaced by... You know him. You absolutely love him. You cannot live without him. Rashad Miller. It's going to be significantly less puns. Thank now. you. I mean, there's still going to be some. Who they earns? Just, I mean, they just slip okay. through. Okay. I, don't, I don't actually plan them out. You don't, you don't, you don't set them up. No. You, just, yeah. you just run them. I mean, Rich has them all like laid out like, you know, the first 20 plays of a well, football I can see, game. I can see in his brain there's a pull-down menu. <laughs> I think, they're just, I think they're just orchestrated. They, right. he, just, he just forces them down. So, I, like I said, I think our, our crack staff is going to get us um, McDuffie, yep. Chapin, deck lists. Yeah, we're getting deck lists. I'm not sure what they're playing, but I'm going to guess at least one of them is playing Reanimator. <laughs> that's that's pretty, much a, pretty much a crisp bet this yeah. weekend. Although uh, Patrick Chapin, you know, he always loves to play his, he likes uh, his control, control decks. Control. Um, and there are a lot of control cards that are playing like so. Yeah, it uh, it's not legacy, it's not just fast decks, you know, getting out of Brand or, you know, storming or doing things, you know, comboing out. There's still control decks, there's still aggro decks. They're, they're all here, they're just all really powerful and just interact with each other in different in, ways than in standard. In the, in the world of Grizzlebrand, because a lot of player had, players had to know that, that this Grizzlebrand reanimator was coming, what's that... What's that do to the combo deck? So you know, does it does it lessen the number that you're likely to see in the field? You're going to see more Char Belcher or less Char Belcher because of the big words of Red Pass. The Char Belcher is a deck. If, if you're a Char Belcher player, you're playing it because you like that deck. Um, there's a lot of variance with you know trying to go off a of turn one with a deck with one right. with two or one land in it. So you know. Maybe the Char Belcher players go, oh, Grizzlebrand's a better right. combo outlet, and they switch to that. But um, So we know Corey McDuffie is playing Reanimator. Um, we know that uh, just, Patrick Chaper, Chapin is playing Reanimator. Yeah, I mean, I just saw a careful study, so I figured, you know what? <laughs> There's not a lot of decks that are running careful study in, in Legacy. Most of them are Reanimator decks. But I see a Grizzlebrand and, and a Exhum. That's an interesting card in the Reanimator mirror. <laughs> and it looks like it looks like Patrick is uh, considering discarding it, which probably isn't the worst thing at all. Because well, who, who wants to play that game? Right. The, well, do you have the entomb in response to my exhum game? Right. Yeah, that seems that that seems like a very dangerous game of chicken. So a lot of action already, and we still only have two lands on the table. Wow. Is that a graph digger's cage? Yeah. And actually, it looks like Corey isn't actually playing um, Reanimator. It looks like he's playing Sneak and Show. I see a sneak attack in Corey's deck in his hand, so he could. Does he have a transformational sideboard? I still don't see. Yeah, we don't have his. We don't have yeah, Corey's deck list. Necklace, yes, but there's definitely a sneak attack in his, in his gonna, hand. We're gonna get it. So he's either playing sneak and show or his reanimator deck changes into sneak and show. But you know we have a grab digger's cage in play, which doesn't affect sneak attack at all. Right. For sure until. Ponder from Patrick. He also has a cracker. So this this is going to be one of those longer games with the two fast decks because right. they each have to wade through each other's you know defense mechanisms. The cracker is all it really takes to slow down a sneak attack. It's like unless he gets multiple red sources to do it. You know. Well, one line, wasteland from Corey will certainly end that dream from from Chapin. And you got to believe that. He might. There's a sweep. Yeah, I mean, there might not be a wasteland in this deck because it's three colors, and it's kind of a stretch for your mana base. But we'll see. If we do get the deck list, then we'll be able to let you know. If not, then we're just gonna have to wait and see what the cards. Oh, the cards show up. Cards in sex lang and island. So what? What's Chapin's line of play here? What's where? Where does where does he get? 
how does he get out of the cage, as it were? Um, I would think that it has to be some cyborg card, so he would have to be prepared for this. If he cyborgs like Shorntail, or if he cyborgs actual artifact removal, uh, those are really the best ways he can you know, get rid of it, because he's, he's just got to get rid of it. The cage has to be gone, or he's going to have to, you know, pay full price for any of his threats. Do a quick scan of Pat's sideboard. I mean, Patrick's playing like he's got, he's got an out. Oh, I see a Jace to Mind Yep. That in itself can just win the game. You know, he resolves a Jace and goes unchecked for quite a while. Eventually, he can play six, seven land and just start casting well, he can his Well, start, start hard casting, I'm sure. Yeah. That's actually an interesting sideboard card that Patrick has in his deck, uh, Not of This World, which is the colorless counter spell, the Tribal Incident Eldrazi. I don't know if he brought that in, but we were just looking through a sideboard, and that's the only thing. And he has three short tails on the sideboard, so he might have brought those in if he was just suspecting the, the cages. The short tail will give him a, the, a way to get, you know, get around, something into play, just a threat. And if that threat is Tide Spout Tyrant, then, you know, then he has all the bouncing that he needs. Right now, Pat has Patrick has five land in play. He's only he has six land in play. Yeah, this might be the most land we'll see him play all weekend. So I think plan A is you know use his careful studies to get more land to actually get enough land into play to cast his threats and you know just continue to cast his threats to uh, Corey's counter magic, which he does on the force field. Let's see how Corey does. Ooh, but million click. Pretty sure Pat's gonna let that resolve. Because the only way he can I guess he can pay full price for his force award. Right. To try to protect his Jason Wise. Looks like that's what it's gonna happen. Let's practice two fetches. And Corey's just sitting there looking. He he shuffled the the power blast to the top of his hand. He's just waiting to just pay a red and and just foil all that. It's like, go ahead, sack your land, shuffle up, lose a life, cast your spell. There we go, the, the alternate casting cost of blue, blue, three for Force of Will. Hard cast Force of Will on the click. It's there. Wait, is it, did he just put it straight in his graveyard? Yeah. Okay. Does he know what's going to happen? It's like, yeah, this is what it's all. Corey, Corey's certainly going to go get that red source. So red source is going to be a red... No, that's the power blast. Power blast. Okay. And not only are we going to get rid of the force of but there's still a 3-1 click right. and a trigger. Right. Just waiting to take away the Jason Ice Maker. This 3-1 may go all the way. Six turns. I mean, it's, it's it's a quick six turn clock. Yeah, and look uh, at look at Chapin's hand. There's one card that that does something. Right. Which probably isn't going to be there long. Probably not. But let's let's see what Corey decides to do. Right. He's thinking well, about Corey's it. Corey's holding on to a force of will as well. So his his click could have quite some. He drew a land. So that's the seventh land, and um, you know, this plan could still be, you know, try to play as much land as you want as you have, and try to, you know, Hard cast with right. But we both know that's probably not going to work. Corey's hand is not very stacked. He can get aggressive brand into play, but he doesn't even need to. Yeah, yeah, right. I mean, Patrick has chosen to Caracas the the click back to Corey's hand. Because he needs, I mean, he needs time. There's sneak attack, so now no more uh, Caracas isn't going to save him anymore. It'll stop one guy. 
Right. But then it just comes back later. And it's probably going to target the grizzled one, if that's what it's going to say. And the cool thing about the grizzled brand is it doesn't even have to attack in order to have right. you win the game. It just, it just comes super down. Value. Yeah, it just comes down and you draw, and you can draw 14 cards. Yeah, well, I mean, we saw that in the, we saw that in the last match where Owen Turtonwall just got it. Yeah. And the the cards were the, the card draw was the significant part. I mean, the the grizzled brand was the finisher, but only because he was there. Right. It it could have been you know an enchantment that did the same thing. Right. So in the turn, we're going to activate Sneak Attack, the old I didn't turn trigger trick. Wow, that drew a force of will. It's probably just going to let him keep all of that. Oh, he lets him keep it. He gets rid of the force of will. Yeah, there's uh, another force of will. And he drew another one. <laughs> nice. But the thing is, Corey doesn't have to cast spells, really, to win the right. game. Except there it for is. the spells, maybe a couple of spells that he draws off of these 14 cards. Right. But he has a Force of Will of his own and a Misdirection, so he can effectively counter two of Patrick Chase's counter spells. Right. I mean, he's going to... He's going to... Is that... So he's gonna what's, the, what's, the big, what's the big red duty he has in his hand? Uh, he has a Through the Breach, also. In his hand, so I'm pretty sure he is on sh sneak and show because I don't know this through the breach would be in a transformational sideboard for a reanimator. Yeah. yeah, this is definitely a sneak. This, yeah. this is definitely a sneak and show. Or maybe he cut the show and tells for through the breach. Show and tell is probably very risky in this in this reanimator field. Well, yeah, environment because you know. You play show and tell, and you both get you both get you both get a gristle brand, which means no one gets one. But if you have through the breach, then you know it's just you. Yep. So Corey's gonna go down to four. He now has what, 18 cards in hand. Bunch of kind of matters. Yeah. Lotus petals. I mean, obviously, the cri the grizzle brand is coming back. To his hand. Yeah. Brainstorm. Lotus petals. And he's got all of his petals, so if he draws more threats, he can just you know, sneak, just sneak, him in him, sneak them all in to play. But it doesn't look like he's doing that because he has a couple of ponders. He has another, he has a fetch line that he used to shuffle that he's going to do that. So you can see three new cards off of the ponder. Well, and he's really not in any danger here. It's, you know, it's not like, it's not like Pat Chapin can flash something in that's going to deal any damage. It doesn't it? Certainly doesn't have a lightning bolt. Um, it, he's gonna, he's gonna need to take turn the turn to, to both resolve a threat through a bunch of force of wills yeah, and a right. misdirection. Yeah. At this point, he's just. At this point, he's just he's he's out he's out carded. You know, the Mc, Corey McDuffie has significant resource advantage in this game, and there's I can't imagine there's too much coming back from this from Patrick Chapin. Yeah, I think Patrick eventually is going to lose to one of these creatures because he can only bounce one with brackets, so he's at least taking three a turn. Right. Oh no, this, that, um, the Bedillion click is, uh, you put in the play with Sneak Attack. So it's actually going to... Oh right, it's going to go away. Yeah. Of course, he's just going to play a bunch of cards so that, he does, so that he doesn't have to discard as many. Right. Cards, another brainstorm, just look at three more cards, sees a pipping needle. Wow, that's a big game. Oh, I'm pretty sure Pith Pith and Needle can name Caracas. <laughs> um, Pith and Needle, and here comes the Force of Will because Patrick knows that he really doesn't have any. He's, had, he's checking to see if it says non man. Right. It, there's a lot of different template, templating on right. the can't play activated ability cards. But uh, I think the template on Pith and Needle is non mana abilities.
focus, the hard cast force the will. Last ditch effort. And we're probably going to see a misdirection because misdirection is made for this situation. Or maybe that spell pierce. Either one. Now the thing is, Corey's at three life, so he can only use force of wills, ult actual ultimate cast because, you know, three times this game, barring a hit from a Grizzle Brand, you know, for the life of the life. And I'll, and I'll verify for you that that Penny Needle does say activated abilities of sources with chosen name can't be activated unless they're mana abilities. So they can hit land abilities, they just can't hit mana abilities. Right. So you can stop a wasteland, you can stop a Caracas, you can stop... You couldn't stop Cabal Coffers. You could surely name Cabal Coffers. You, yes. It, certainly. But, name. but it won't stop it from... And in a bunch of black men. Murder Treetop Village. So even if even if Chapin bounces were able to bounce there's a brand. I'm not passing priority yet. I know you know my hand, but I wouldn't decide what to do. could just sneak it back in. Yeah. And swing with it. Well, no, 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 no. You wait until it goes around the pass. And then I got two more force wheels, too. And then the next turn, right. you, you wait till the next turn to sneak right. it back in the play. But, <laughs> there, I mean, there is an eventuality here that this sneak, sneak attack plus one grizzle ring right. equals you're probably going to lose Pack of Chapin. And with Crack is not doing anything now, right. he's probably going to have to think that he's still responding to this Pitha Needle because, you know, there hasn't been an act. It's untapped. Right. And I have to, you know, think that after losing the counter spell war, the Pippin Eater, that we all know what's going to get named. Right. Probably not Sneak Attack. Most likely Krakus. So, <laughs> so we're going to bounce something. Well, it looks like um, McDuffie already played oh, something. We didn't, we didn't so bounce it. So he didn't bounce it. Wow. I guess Patrick Chapin's line of thinking is, I'll take this damage, hope you don't have or get another threat, and those two... Go away. Yeah, those two creatures are going to go away. But, well, we, but we know he has another threat. And he's now he's, he's back up to nine life. Yeah, so he can draw seven more cards. Yeah, so I'm not sure I understand the... I mean, if you think of it, if you think about it, that's really his best option of trying to win this game. We can see both players' hands. Sure. We know that Corey has a bunch of counter spells and another Grizzle Brand in his hand. Right. But what's what's the only way that Patrick can really win this game? It's not by giving him back the Grizzle Brand to attack him again next sure. turn. That's one more draw right. step. And, and, and we saw right there, we saw right there Pat Chapin point to both the guys at end of turn to right. make sure that they went away. So in, a, in situations when all is lost, you have to give yourself some door some, to walk through. Yeah, some some non-zero chance right. of, of winning. It's, I mean, as far-fetched as it is, as it can seem. Right. Because, you know, Corey could have drawn a bunch of nothings. And if you look at his hand, he really only has one more threat, just the one more Grizzle Brand. We, right. I mean, that's all it's going to take, but... And if, here it comes. Imagine if he didn't draw that. If he right. didn't draw that one card. Right. This this game would still be going on. Again, Pat Chapin really doesn't have answers to to Graf Digger's cage. Looking down his list real fast. There's the hand. Yep, there he is. Congratulations to Corey McDuffie. He takes that game. Yeah, looking looking at his list, there were there were definitely there were really no answers for Patrick Chapin uh, to the Graf Digger's cage in that game.